One, two, three. Take it from me, I don't. Oh, I can go less sharp than that, right. So I met Jake and Joseph years ago when uh, we were at school and we were in a band together when we were teenagers, kind of a rock and roll throwback type group and you know I think we probably all changed musically quite a bit since then. So I actually spoke with Jake uh, a few years ago. He kind of challenged me with this idea of um, going into a studio just for a weekend and recording everything live. We had the piano, the acoustic guitar, double bass, one vocal mic. And we sat in a circle and everything that happened is just there in that room. All of the takes and all of the mistakes, they, get, they end up on the, on the album. And there's something uh, raw and something organic about their way of working and responding to other people. It was a really organic process. We worked through the songs, we took it song by song, um, working deep, deep into the night and into the early morning. And um, we crafted our parts as we were going on. Some songs probably only took maybe an hour from when they first heard them to when the recorded version was ready. And sometimes it was more like three hours, you know. Some of those songs which we finished quite quickly, maybe if we'd played them longer they would have been completely different. Maybe if we'd played them on different days they would have been completely different. But um, it really is a good document of that moment and that weekend. Gentlemen, find your notes. Watch It is uh, my home town that's in Somerset in England and I grew up there for 19 years before I moved out. I've been away and I'm wondering how much this town's changed. I guess it's been half a year now. I think it doesn't really matter where you come from, I think everybody kind of feels a little bit that way about their own hometown. Uh, that feeling of you're never quite sure uh, if you trust it, <laughs> its opinion fully, um, and the kind of the wrongs of the town, but also the rights of that town, and, and what that kind of gave you. Watch it, watch it, I'm still the same. Watch it, watch it, I still watch it. It's, it's, it's cool. I love Watch It just because of the way in which the chords flow. It's just a really nice chordy song, straight down the line. It's one of the poppier songs I think on the on the record. It's got that kind of certain lift and certain bounce to it. I think it makes it a really nice opener. Water's quite an interesting track for me on the album because I don't think I, I was taken with it really at first. I think it took a little while for it to really grow on me. Um, and the way in which it progresses again goes from that kind of really sparse and quite heartbroken uh, way in which it, it's just the raw guitar and voice and, and slowly sort of builds up and we add in these textures and these layers. It becomes a really kind of mesmerising listen. I really love what Jake and Joseph did on that song, where the piano and the double bass come in at the start of the second verse. I think that's one of my favourite moments on the whole record. Without Joseph and Jake being the musicians who I played with, the album would have turned out completely differently, so I really value their contribution. Again, you 
can handle the bleed of the other instruments and performances. All of which we use to create the whole effect of the record. That was one of a few songs where we came in and I did a backing vocal. I think it was just Water and Dorothy Rosalina. You grace me with water. I did have some reservations about doing that, but I spoke to Joe so about really keeping them quite background and keeping it quite subtle so that the main room sound was still the predominant one. On uh, Take It From Me, I really love the, the basis of the chords in that track and how Tom's voice works. For me, the whole record is about Tom's voice. It's how Tom's voice tells the story of each of those songs and the space that we allowed for the recording and the, the, the sound of that space on the recording itself. That was very important to me. And um, I think we achieved that on um, Take It From Me. I worked as a teacher for a while and I guess I, I actually wrote that song during a, a 10 minute break time in the morning. Um, and I kind of thought it ironic maybe in that moment that I was uh, teaching people, young people, how to kind of get by in life and like giving them knowledge where sometimes it felt like I didn't know where to begin myself, you know. So that's what that song's about. Nothing Left to Hide, I think, is probably my favourite recording on the album. It took it took a little while to get there. Uh, I think it was the Saturday night. The end of a really long day. We've been slogging away, uh, trying to get these these tracks done. It had felt like not a lot had been going right. There were just mistakes creeping in. Though. Why? Why is this happening? Why are we doing this? Right, let's start again, let's start again. We're going around and around, trying to play it, trying to play it, and just nothing's quite clicking. It got to the point where it was it was 2.30 in the morning. Uh, and it's at this point that Tom says, one more take, and then one more take. And Joseph and I are like, this is done. Joseph was saying that he had blisters on his fingers. <laughs> and Jake was essentially asleep. We did one more take and that's the, I think, the take that ends up on the album. But that final take was the one that we used and it came out way better than the others, so... Fuck em. Um <laughs> It's, uh... It's got about 2 a.m. feel for me. It's tired and beaten, <laughs> uh, worn out from the kind of uh, the emotions of that, the sessions, but you know, the emotions of love and the emotions of life. That was the thing with the whole album, it was just like getting through four or five minutes consistently. You had to be patient, you had to be resilient and uh, focused, which was tiring as well. Uh, for Metamorphosis, I don't think Tom will mind me saying this, but I think he is one he had the most doubts about. Definitely the most difficult song that we've recorded. I think there was a few reasons for that. It was six minutes long, so when you're doing it in live takes, there's a lot more opportunity to for, for one person to mess up because you've got you know 18 minutes of collected parts there. We had to spend some time rehearsing it in order to understand how each instrumental track would work, how each instrumental performance would sit. <laughs> The song is about exactly what the word suggests, which is just about how quickly your life can change and how quickly your outlook on a particular subject can change. And
and your perception of yourself. Metamorphosis, I actually was still writing um, on the day we recorded it. You know, I finished putting it down and then put the lyrics down in front of me and we recorded it. So I think that, that felt like the hardest one to get right. And that was probably from a personal standpoint, just to try and express what I wanted to put out there in the lyrics. It was probably the most complicated one to do and get it right and tight in a live scenario with the amount of rehearsal that we had available to us. And it made the title track of the album in the end, so that's great. It ultimately felt like the best way to summarise what the whole album was and where I was as a person. For me, Dark Knight, Red and Grey is uh, a really interesting point in the album. It's where we kind of switch around the instruments. And the piano takes over as the kind of lead instrument and the guitar fades back into the background. Um, I think initially Tom had wanted to do it like that and he really pushed that we tried it. I think Jake and Joseph were quite keen for me to play the piano part on the guitar because originally I came in with that piano part as a... just as a guitar part that would work like that. And I think I always had it in my mind when I knew how that song was going to be recorded that that would be the piano part. It felt almost piano-esque when, you know, when I first composed it. Maybe one day The, the part that I played, um, or at least the second part that I played, was actually based on Jake's original piano idea, where it was, um, you know, he was doing a very simple thing on the piano. So I actually took his part as my part in the end. He was always very much up for taking our points of view, um, even if he you know, didn't agree. There weren't any um, points where we all kind of disagreed or at all. We were all very um, democratic. We were very good at kind of compromising as well, but I was very keen for it to not be a dictatorship or something. You'll feel it then, you'll feel it. It was very much a collaborative effort. I had to also uh, listen as well as Some, sometimes I, I was quite demanding in terms of what I wanted them to play. I already had a vision. Um, for example, the the kind of single note piano part on the chorus of Dorothy Rosalina. Well, I was going to say something like... Dorothy Rosalina was one of the last songs to be written for the album. And I guess it's about that kind of anxious hope that you have maybe at the start of a new relationship. For me, uh, it's probably one of my favourite songs I think on the album. I, I really enjoy the way it progresses and the way it develops. That spacious, uh, empty beginning and the way it just kind of builds. I think my favourite part in terms of uh, being a musician on the record is being able to think about which of my double bass notes is going to resonate best with Tom's guitar, Tom's voice and the piano rather than putting lots and lots of flashy bass notes in it it's just all about creating an atmosphere I really enjoyed the recording process in that one as well I think it was one of the last tracks that we actually got down to do uh, properly and, and it just 
it, it felt very cathartic at the end to really just like let it all go and I think that was a, a, a highlight for me. I never really intended to have an instrumental of the song but I just kept seeming to write parts for Dorothy Rosalina so the, the, the second part of it kind of was born from that. And there's a lot of similarities between the songs because of that, which is nice. Um, for example, the chorus of Dorothy Rosalina won that rhythm, like, and the chorus of Dorothy Rosalina two and that rhythm. You know, it's, there's a lot of links between them. Um, the harmonics in the verse of uh, Dorothy Rosalina two. chorus of Dorothy Rosalina 1, so the uh, the second time round those. I think it brings something really different into the way in which we worked in the studio in this entirely instrumental track, leaving these sort of spaces for the, for the sounds and the instruments to kind of explore around this theme. It sort of just came together quite naturally quite comfortably and everybody just really started to kind of lose themselves in this we did long old recording sessions and um you know these are the the sort of takes that came out of just playing it around again and again It was, yeah, it's a thoroughly enjoyable way to spend a weekend, you know, we got away down into Somerset, down into um, the studio, is out in the in the country and we just kind of uh, hauled up in, uh, in Joseph's house for the weekend. It was a really nice experience, it was a really warming experience. We um, often get in the studio and take bits apart and do lots of overdubs and separate takes for instruments but for this record we're just like right we're gonna learn how to learn the songs play it all live allow all uh, those imperfections that you get from live performance to be in the record and have that as part of the environment and it sounds great and I'm really happy with it. Music that is free in that space and you can get those bleeds and you can get those moments where you can kind of hear the background sounds that for me brings up uh, something really different to the, to the album. And uh, Jake brought cameras and uh, GoPros and stuff with him, um, which was great to get just some kind of documentation of the session. And one of the photos he took, I ended up cropping and altering to use as the album artwork as well. I'm really proud of the album as a whole. For me, when I listen to the album, I can still kind of feel that weekend and it sounds like that weekend felt, which is really nice. <laughs>